Capote's Women, a true story of love, betrayal, and a swan song for an era by Lawrence Lemer, is a compelling narrative that captures the rich tapestry of high society and the literary world through the lens of Truman Capote's relationships with the swans, his coterie of wealthy, fashionable, and influential female friends. Lemer adeptly portrays the complex interplay of friendship, ambition, and art that defined an era of American culture, while also framing the story within the broader context of Capote's life and work. The book takes readers back to the mid-20th century when Truman Capote, already a celebrated author for works like Other Voices, Other Rooms, and Breakfast at Tiffany's, reaches the pinnacle of his career with the groundbreaking nonfiction novel In Cold Blood. During this period, Capote develops close, intimate friendships with several high-society ladies, who he refers to as his swans. These include Babe Paley, the impeccably stylish wife of CBS founder William S. Paley, Slim Keith, a socialite and the ex-wife of director Howard Hawks, Lee Radziwill, the sister of Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, Gloria Guinness, a fashion icon and writer, CZ Guest, a socialite and gardening expert, and Morella Agnelli, an Italian aristocrat. Lemer explores the lives and personalities of these women, delving into their glamorous yet often troubled existences. Despite their wealth and status, the swans are shown to wrestle with personal demons and the constraints of their public lives. Capote becomes their confidant, the one person with whom they can share their secrets and vulnerabilities. His ability to listen and empathize, along with his charisma and wit, endears him to these women, and they form a mutually beneficial social and emotional alliance. As the author of Capote's Women, Lemer meticulously details how Capote, with his connections to these powerful women, finds himself at the epicenter of high society. The narrative reveals not just the glittering parties and public celebrations, but also the private moments of heartache, infidelity, and emotional strife that haunt the swans. Capote's friendships with these women provide him with a treasure trove of insider information that would later have a profound impact on both his career and his relationships. Still riding high from the success of In Cold Blood, Capote begins to work on what he envisions as his magnum opus, a novel titled Answered Prayers. This book is supposed to lay bare the secrets of high society, drawing from the lives of the swans and others in Capote's inner circle. However, as he progresses with the novel, the dark underbelly of his ambitions starts to surface. Struggling with writer's block, alcoholism, and drug abuse, Capote's persona starts to shift from beloved confidant to potential betrayer. In a quest for literary masterpiece, and perhaps driven by a subconscious desire for self-destruction, Capote decides to publish chapters of Answered Prayers in Esquire magazine. The publication of La Cote Basque 1965, a chapter that thinly veils the scandalous secrets of his high society friends, marks the beginning of the end for Capote's relationships with the swans. The fallout is immediate and catastrophic. Feeling exposed and betrayed, the swans sever their ties with him. Capote is ostracized from the exclusive circles that he once frequented, and he is left to grapple with the repercussions of his actions. Lemer takes readers through the emotional unraveling of Capote following this betrayal. The swans, who once formed the bedrock of his social support, are now his fiercest critics. The loss of their friendship sends Capote further into a spiral of depression and substance abuse. Ironically, the story of his downfall becomes as compelling as his literary successes, poignantly illustrating the tragic arc of fame and friendship. Meanwhile, the lives of the swans continue to unfold as they navigate the shifting landscapes of their own existences, each dealing with the public exposure in their way. The book reflects on the changing era, where the loose confidences and the old guard of social elites give way to a more private and cautious society. In many ways, the betrayal of the swans marks not only the decline of Capote, but also the end of an age of opulence and openness among America's upper class. The swans themselves experience this transformation as their lives adapt to the aftermath of Capote's indiscretions and the broader societal shifts of the time. Capote's Women ultimately serves as both a biography of Truman Capote and a portrait of his most intimate social circle. Lemer's exploration of the author's life is anchored in the nuanced relationships he held with the swans 
providing a humanizing and at times critical view of a literary giant. The book dissects the complexities of friendship fueled by shared confidences and the consequences of ambition when it overrides loyalty and discretion. It's a tale of how the desire for art and recognition can lead to self-destructive choices as well as the power dynamics at play between a celebrated writer and his muses. Lemur does not merely recount events. He also provides analysis and insight, weaving in the themes of love, betrayal, and the end of an era throughout the narrative. The demise of Capote's relationships with his swans coincides with the loss of innocence for many of the book's characters, paralleling the evolution of American society as a whole during this period. Through a meticulous assembly of interviews, personal letters, and other primary sources, the book paints a vivid picture of this unique time and space in American cultural history. It offers a behind-the-scenes look into an extravagant, yet ultimately fragile world where unspoken agreements of discretion and trust are the currency and where the breaking of such codes leads to dramatic consequences. As the swan song for the era resonates through the lives of Capote and his former confidants, Capote's Women stands as a testament to the transitory nature of fame and the delicate balance between the public and private selves, especially for those living under the scrutiny of the spotlight. It captures the essence of a transient moment in the cultural landscape, one marked by art, glamour, personal pains, and the enduring complexities of human relationships. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.